Hi, this is Matt doing a follow-up video on the uh, Summit Motors aluminum 461 double hump heads and comparing them to the uh, 400 small block Chevy heads that I will be replacing. And uh, to do that, it's going to require some uh, some drilling, particularly the steam holes that the uh, 400 small block Chevy engine has and uh, some questions that a uh, viewer had in the comment section, I want to address that, um, kind of clarify what I'm going to be doing. Um, and instead of going to a big long explanation, I'm just going to jump right into it. Uh, I have the, uh, the original 400 head right here. And I have two transfer punches sticking out of these steam holes. You know, this one on the exhaust toward the exhaust side is a quarter inch and this one is a uh, 3 16 so to start with they are two different sizes and this hole is drilled perpendicular to the deck surface of the head um, okay here we are I have my 400 head sitting up here and then the two steam holes I have the quarter inch transfer punch in the uh, the exhaust side steam hole and I have a 3 16 transfer punch sticking out of the uh, the, in, the intake side and if you can't tell from the video that this is perpendicular to the deck surface and you know that's drilled straight well reasonably straight and the opposite hole is oppositely true. It is drilled between 5 and 10 degrees away from the, the screw hole for the, uh, the head bolt. And there's a reason for that. Um, years ago I picked up this Chevrolet power manual from uh, Apple Chevrolet over the counter at the parts department and there was a lot of useful information in it and there is a section here that shows right here exactly what I'm talking about now here's a schematic showing or a print showing the uh, the layout of the holes on the uh, surface of the head. Um, and below that is a sectional view that shows a cutaway view of the, uh, the cylinder head with the holes. Here's your 3 16 hole and it's drilled at a 10 degree angle away from the, um, the uh, clearance hole for the uh, head bolt or head stud whatever it is you're going to use and there's a reason for that because that is so close to this the wall for that for that stud that if they tried to manufacture it that way they would be breaking so many drills going through there and one side of the drill hitting material here and one side just breaking through and um it would it would just be a complete disaster that is why they that's why it's made that way um if you want to take a good look at that and I'm going to be using this print particularly this here to make a jig plate to clamp to the surface of my um, my new heads the aluminum heads I got from Speedway and lay it out drill some holes um, these will be on a steeper angle. They will be more like uh, maybe between 20 and 30 degrees. It's not important. The important part is they have to be in the right location and the holes have to get to where you want them to go and that is into a water jacket and nowhere else. And um, So I'm going to be using that as a diagram. I'm going to make a jig plate up. I'm going to have two uh, dowel pin holes that are going to locate it. And I'm going to have pre-drilled holes that I'm going to use to guide the drill and just do it by hand. Um, 
I know there's a lot of uh, videos out there showing people using a, uh, a head gasket as a template to lay out the whole location and they center punch it and they drill it by hand. Now that's okay. Some people are good at that. Okay. They, they can drill the holes by hand and, you know, do it successfully. But, uh, you know what, you're taking a hell of a risk when you're doing that. Um, you know, I've drilled a lot of holes in my lifetime. I'm a tool and die maker by trade and I've got a, uh, you know, college degree in machine technology. So, um, I've been, been around a, a few shops and, uh, drilled a lot of holes and and I particularly I like to make things so one of the other reasons why I would like to make a jig plate to do it is because I think it'd be fun to do it that way and um, that way I'm guaranteed that as long as I do my part right have a sharp drill and take my time and use plenty of lubricant drilling into this aluminum head I'm gonna come out with a nice good job it's gonna be right the first time um, I'm gonna to have to admit that once in my past, yes, I did take a set of uh, heads and screwed them up. It didn't ruin the head, but it was just, uh, you know, it was uh, ignorance on my part when I was younger, a lot younger. Um, so, there, uh, for Leonard, um, that is why I'm going to be drilling these particular holes up here, the 3 16 holes that are closest to the intake side. That's why they are drilled at an angle, and they will be. And on the aluminum heads. Oh, before I turn the camera around and go to the aluminum heads, you can see right here that I went to the pain of putting a tie wrap through the water jacket of this cylinder head right here. If you can't see that, I'll move it. On the cast iron heads, the factory cast iron heads, the water jacket extends all the way between the combustion chambers. Um, the aluminum heads, uh, not so much. Um, if I take my little finger and stick it in there, I mean, it's, it, it's wide open between the uh, combustion chambers and there's even a little shallow jacket that goes between there. If I do that on these aluminum heads, I mean, for the most part, I'm hitting solid aluminum until I can't even get my finger far enough in there to get to the top of the water jacket. So, um, for Leonard, th th that's why they're drilled at an angle. Um, on this particular one, on the cast iron heads, they're drilled at a 10 degree angle from the factory for the sole purpose of not running into this bolt hole right here and not breaking drills off. Um, yeah, that would be disastrous. And I'm not telling anybody that, it, you know, they do it their way and they're successful at it and they're getting good results out of it. Fine. Um, I'm just going to show you the way I'm going to do it. Now, I'm going to set this one aside, and I'm going to go back to the aluminum head, because there's some things that I wanted to talk about that I didn't realize um, a couple days ago when I made the video, and that uh, I thought would be worth uh, discussing. Okay guys, here's the, the summit head. I laid a piece of foam down here to keep this from getting scratched up because aluminum is really soft and you know like right there is a little bit of a nick. Um, so I'm trying to keep them from getting bunged up. So What I wanted to talk about in this, having the head in this position here. The difference between the cast iron head and the aluminum head is that there's a water jacket in the cast iron head 
that is oh deck thickness deep between the the water jackets um you can that you can see that in the uh, drawing in the uh chevrolet performance book and aluminum heads if you stick your finger between the uh or try to get in there between the um they're solid almost all the way up to the full thickness of the head and um you have to drill the steam holes at more of an angle so you can actually reach the water jacket a little bit you know that's that's where you want your hole to go no doubt about it um i mean i don't think i have to you know talk about that any farther and you know there's a lot of other videos on youtube of uh people doing the same thing i'm going to do they put them in at a 20 to 30 degree angle on the intake side 316 drill and they have success doing it and so that's what i'm going to stick with somewhere between 20 and 30 degrees and i'm going to make a plate up to do it that's the only difference that you know you know my procedure is going to be different i'm going to use a jig plate that i'm going to make beforehand before i go cutting holes in my my cylinder heads um to me it's just a matter of uh you know well machinists and tool makers have a saying it's like measure twice cut once measure once cut twice um you know i'd rather take the extra time to um have something make my my drilling operations you know a lot easier and a lot safer because the last thing i want to do is have a whoops and scrap a set of uh a head that i just i'm not going to scrap both of them but if i do it's just like i don't want to be screwing these things up i mean that that's why i'm going to be doing it the way i am and i'm and to move on from that After looking at the spec sheet and looking these heads over a little bit more, um, I noticed some things that were of particular interest. Um, and that these heads, number one, they don't have a, an exhaust crossover. Um, that's just staying with, um, you know, modern practices. Um, they don't, a lot of people block them off because they want a denser air fuel mixture after the engine warms up, you know, just to get a couple, you know, to get a little more power and torque when the engine's running warm. But the uh, exhaust crossover is definitely a good feature if you are running a carburetor in colder climates. Um, just a thought. These heads, if you can see, have what appears to be screws for valve covers that have the uh, center bolts. Um, the uh, valve covers that they used on the uh, like Corvettes in the 80s when they developed the uh, the HO head, the aluminum HO head that they put on the Corvettes in the 80s and early 90s, which, uh, by the way, they're not a bad cylinder head. Um, uh, I don't think they're rated for, like, real high performance, but, you know, the ZZ3, ZZ4 heads, um, whatever they call them now, they're not, they're not bad heads. I had a pair of those many, many years ago, back in the 90s. I bought a pair to put on a uh, old Corvette that I had, a 76 Corvette. And they were fine. Um, Hell of a lot better than what came originally on a 76 Corvette, that's for sure. And another thing I want to show you is this. Um, the valve cover rail is raised. And, you know, 
it's machined so it's gonna seal better not leak but I did notice that hey look at that and it's raised and I did notice this um, my guide plates are loose my studs are loose um one two three four five six seven so all your um, studs and guide plates have to be, you know, check them before you put them on your motor. Uh, you know, if, if you don't, then you have nobody to blame but yourself. That's something I'm going to like, I'm pointing out here. Okay, look at this. I'm, I'm taking that out by, by hand. I don't know why they wouldn't have... Uh, Maybe there's a reason why they left them loose, but they don't make it clear in their product description. That one's tight. I don't know how tight it is, but it is tight. Um, so there you have it. Um, that was a surprise. Um, I would have found it sooner or later because when you go to put the rocker arm, the rocker arms on, that's definitely going to show up. But if you were in a hurry to assemble a motor and it, that could be a little aggravating. Um, or maybe I'm just being too particular. I don't know. Um, you'd be the judge, you know. How you feel about that? But other than, otherwise, nice product. And uh, Leonard Foster, um, I like your advice about filling the uh, the ports up and checking for leaky valves because if they're not liquid tight, then the seats aren't done. I mean, period. So they'll have to go to a machine shop, and that would be aggravating. So, Leonard, thanks for the feedback. I hope I answered some questions for you about the steam holes and the ones on the intake side of the heads are three sixteenths. They are they are drilled at a particular angle away from the head bolt hole for the sole purpose that if you want to get to the water jacket and not break the drill off you want to stay away from that head bolt hole and uh, it's just uh, you know I don't think that, that the angle is particularly um, fussy I mean the engine doesn't know it doesn't carry a protractor and a scale around measuring the angles it's it's um, it's just it's just a matter of getting that damn steam hole where you need it to go without any um, problems. So, if you were able to sit through this video and tolerate it, thank you. Um, I'm glad those of you that liked the last video, you gave me a thumbs up. I got some new subscribers. And for those of you that have left comments, thank you. I always appreciate constructive feedback. And until next time, have a good one.